to Lord. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that the understanding will take place, Lord. Father, I pray, O oh Lord, that this meeting shall be used to preserve your purpose on earth, to preserve your purpose, to preserve your plan, to establish your will, to bring revival, to, to release God's people to, to, to I calling you, have calling them. Say greater and nothing before me then. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. School of Evangelism, the intro course or the intro teaching on the first teaching. The topic is the disciple and disciple. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, Mark 3, 15. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. Hallelujah. Take note of the word humble to humble you, to train you, and to know what is in your heart, your context matter most in life. Mark 316. And to have power Mark 315 is talking about you getting to the level to heal the sick, to practice everything that Jesus Christ said that greater work that he has done is what we are going to do. So the purpose of this course is to prepare you as a disciple to make, to do it according to God's way. The word the disciple means followers of Christ. Disciple means those who imitate Christ. Disciple means those who has agreed to take their cross and follow Jesus. The fourth disciple here is me and all of us are the disciple now. That you are to be the leaders of leaders of leaders. Discipleship is a period when we all go through the process of knowing God intimately. There are six areas of the discipleship. There are the discipleship formation. There are six areas of your life that must cover. In the discipleship formation, there are six areas of your life that the discipleship must cover. The first areas of your life that must cover the first areas of your life that the discipleship, because when you are talking about the discipleship, it's a period of you becoming like Christ, training to becoming like Christ, having the mind of Christ. The first, the first area of your life that discipleship must must cover is number one, your mental transformation. You must be able to train the way you think. You must not be easily influenced by what you hear or by what you see. Well, because many things that we hear that we see. I'm still on the disciple and the disciple. I'm talking about six areas of your life that your discipleship at the beginning must cover. Number one, your mental transformation. You must be mentally transformed. According to the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1, you must learn how to renew your mental thinking. Many people are living in 20 centuries in their mental thinking. And you must be able to get ready to learn this. Number two areas, and okay, number one, please get ready. We are in the new year. There will be old way of thinking. Old way of thinking must gone. You must ask God to help you to think better. And, and there are some books that can help you. Holy Bible can help you. Teaching like this as well can help you. Take them to study can help you. Another areas of your life that did because the topic is the disciple and the disciple. The second areas of your life that must be covered is your 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 heads, your eating habits, your bathing habits, your cleaning habits. When it comes to discipleship, you have to cover every area of your life. When it comes to honesty in your life, if you have, you have to be very, very transparent. In your head, you must be able to do it right. You must be very honest. In the book of the Kings, we read about the there, there is a pot, there is a death the pot. Have you read in the Bible? When the source of the problem is a problem. Hey, we have death in the pot. Many believers are eating deadly things every day. Another areas of your life, also, also, another areas of your life, your decision making must be transformed. Your priority will be challenged. Your priority will be challenged. 
your financial uh, programs and progress will be challenged. If we get to a time during the transformational stage, you will see the map in the page two where you have to be sincere to yourself, not to condemn yourself. But the purpose of the discipleship, a uh, discipleship training is for you to be honest to yourself, to know area. Do you know that somebody can be spiritually sick? When we are talking about it, your head, I'm not only talking about physical head. Most of people can be, can, be, can be spiritually sick. How do you know you are spiritually sick? They are just looking. They are just dull. They are not acting. What they can do? They, they, when, they, when people are spiritually sick, they are paralyzed, incapacitated, incapacitated. So it is so important. This teaching, if we, if we affect all every areas of your life, that you become spiritually alert in everything you do. Also, in the discipleship training, it will also affect your purpose and your destiny. It will, I, will, I was talking with uh, with Pastor Frank that destiny is a is a timing. Destiny has to do with time. Destiny is timing. Your purpose and your destiny. Efficiency. You will learn about efficiency. Usage of time, timing, especially a time is coming as uh, in this discipleship. You will your timing how to manage your time. Time management, we also talk about it. We are going to use Jesus as our example. He left us to live or not for how many years? 33, 33 years. 30 years was of preparation. As we are on this course now, you are on the preparation to prepare for the glory. He prepared 30 years for three years. And up to now, those of us in Jerusalem, that continent is still receiving money for a son that was born there 2,000 years ago. The major capital that they have in Israel is, is the Tories because of someone who was able to manage time very, very well. Also, it also affects your relationship. It will empower you to build quality relationship. It will help you to drop unnecessary relationship. And it will help you to know the power of relationship because we rise in life based on relationship. In the Bible, there will be people who enjoy certain benefits not because of the connection to certain people. And it will also talk us that in relationship, there are some protocol that must be followed, that must be honored, that must be followed. It is my prayer as we are going, the law, the, the law of this, the disciple and discipleship is to make you a mature Christian. That is the purpose. Let us go. He said, Christian maturity is in essence the product of true spirituality. Underline the word true spirituality. It means we have fake spirituality. People can fake it. Have it church language, church dressing. It is very, very important that you are true for your, to yourself. It is the result of growth. Underline the word growth in your, in your hand note. Is it is the result of growth product by the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the light of the word over time? It means you are going to submit yourself to the word of God, you are going to submit yourself to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Who knows who better? What is discipleship? Discipleship is a process of reproducing or imparting the life of a teacher to a pupil. It is a lifelong process. We, we don't grow out. Ah, see me now. I'm an archbishop. We are all. That's why the topic, the topic is Esther and all the members of Mentorship Bible Academy. I'm still a discipleship of the Holy Spirit. And as long as I live, I've got to know that as long as I live, I will continue to learn. And I've got one secret I will never forget. When I begin to learn, I realize I did not know anything. Up till now, I am still learning. So it is so important. It is so important that you allow the word of God to reproduce itself in you and also get ready to also help others. Discipleship is a lifelong process, a systematic and cumulative way of making someone a student or a pupil, a trainee or apprentice, a raw materials, a disciple. So be conform or transform. Underline the word conformed. Underline the word transform. And underline the word image. Conform, transform, image, the key word. To be transformed to the image and stature and full personality of the 
or the uh, uh, overrule the word Easter. I just you say I wanted to remove it. So the personality of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 10, he taught us when you read it, he let us know that through suffering you get mature. He taught about through suffering, get make sure you read it as your teacher has read the Bible passages. He said that through suffering, it means there will be light affliction that God may definitely introduce to your life. Light affliction can be in form of delay, can be certain limitation. God knows the way He will train every one of us. Please prepare during the time of that affliction, during the time, the time of that suffering, you can still stand firm. Romans 8 28 to 29. Are we there? If you are there, we can as well read. Open the Bible ahead. In the book of okay, thank you. If somebody is on the way to Ephesians 4 13 to 12. We are still looking at the word discipleship. Thank you. Underline the word call, purpose. You have been called and you have a purpose. And that purpose is to do the will of God on earth. Ephesians 4 13 to 18. chapter 4, 13 to 14 that we have just listened to. He's talking about becoming a perfect man. He's, becoming, he's talking about you coming to the nature of Christ. Number A, let's look at discipleship right now. Number A, discipleship is God's means of achieving his eternal purpose and central goal of calling man to himself. B, discipleship is God's family training field. Galatia 4, 1 to 2. Galatians 4, 1 to 3. Take note of the following words. You and I, you are heirs of the kingdom. We are co heirs with Christ. Number two, and the Bible says, if you are still a child, you are just like a mere servant. And then the Bible talks about when the fullness of time comes. I pray that this cause will bring the fullness of time to your life, fullness of time to your destiny, that you will be able to. To attain to the stature, it doesn't matter the level we are. We still need. I was talking to one of our sisters that I know I still need to learn, and I see I know I still need to grow, and I know that this course continues. God will take you to where He has proposed and designed for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please read the Hebrew 12 7 to 11.
that we have just read in the book of Hebrews 12, 13, 7 to 13, let us be talking about this evening, the satisfaction of God. When God disciplines you, you need to be able to train yourself. The Bible says if you are not disciplined, you are like a bastard. God disciplines those who he loves. You have to search your heart, you have to be true to yourself. When God disciplines you through the direction of the Holy Spirit, when God disciplines you through you know every authority that God has given to us as to work in the church in every area, you must be able to abide with the discipline. If you cannot be corrected, if you are not teachable, it means you are not yet a disciple, a discipleship person. So God wants us to endure discipline. Number six says, discipleship is the master's apprentice, apprentice relationship. Jesus himself wants us, as long as we live, to relate with him in relationship of him, building us, building us, equipping us. In the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 40, we read, the Bible says, Thank you. That even Jesus Christ is saying, He said, greater work more than what He does, that we do and I will do. It means as you are learning as a disciple, you also become a mentor to somebody. You cannot be above your mentor, but you can still be like your mentor, doing the same thing of God. The rest of the Bible, please read it at home. The beginning and entrance into discipleship. John chapter 3, 13, 27. 1 Corinthians 3, 13 to 14. You see here 36, 36 to 27. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. 1 Kings 19, 19 to 21. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. There must be a voluntary leading of one's neck. When you read all these Bible passages, you realize that, that a discipleship relationship is a job. It's an hard job. It's an hard job that you must keep focused. You must have discipline. You must never say you have arrived. The title does not, does not make us to be arrived. What makes us to be arrived is to keep on learning under the feet of Jesus Christ. When you read all those, please read those Bible passages, you will go to know that every, the beginning of the, of you enter into discipleship with Jesus is that when you, when you allow your neck to be yoked with Jesus, Jesus' neck. Therefore, discipleship is a process, not one-time experience, not after ordination experience. Not after uh, we have been laid and our people are falling down experience. I even realize the more God uses you for signs and wonder, the more you must keep on learning under the feet of Jesus Christ. It is very, very important. It consists of a systematic set of steps. Systematic set, step, set of steps that we have begin now in the mentorship Bible Academy. Hebrews 12, Psalm 118, verse 18. Job 5, 17 to 18, Proverbs 3, 12, John 15, 15. So let's just pick one and three. Thank you. We are just what we call the bone of the world, correction of the world. When God will rebuke you, when God will correct you, when God will adjust you, Job 5, 17 to 18. Job 5, 17 to 18. Then we go straight to the ingredient to discipleship. Please mark the Bible passages that we all read. I expect you to read it all. And when you read it all, their uniqueness to those Bible passages, you will see somebody yielding himself. It's a voluntary work. People will tell you, what are you doing on Saturday? At least you are coming to church on Sunday. It's a deliberately yielding yourself, sacrificing yourself. Don't forget our master sacrificed himself. So that is why we can, he, can, he can have us. And you see, the, the, the requirement for all of God in your life is all of you. The requirement for all of God in your life, for discipleship, is all of you. And the requirement is for you to die to yourself. Job 5, 17 to 18 out. Go 
God bless you, Pastor. If the Lord is telling us that we should give a root in our life for correction. Let us look at the beginning of the discipleship. Let's read uh, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Let's read one Bible here. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. We read one Bible in the New Testament and one in the Old Testament. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 3, 11. Let's lift it to Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Underline the word yoke, and that yoke is in form of learning that will take your time, and the result of it you will have to rest. It can be your career rest, your ministerial rest, your spiritual rest, your soul, your spirit. We have God, but don't forget you have to yield. Write the word yield, yielding to the yoke of Christ, and that yoke comes in form of learning. At the end, we come to the rest. In the book of First Kings, chapter five, verse four, you may read that letter. Solomon says, the Bible says that now the Lord has given Solomon rest on all sides, on all sides. And because he had rest, there are no longer adversary for evil or courage. That is what happened into your life when you have rest. Let's just look at one Bible from the Old Testament. First Kings 3, 11. Let's go. Like the word, your servant was a king. He was looking for a prophet who is already trained. He was, you know, a prophet, a prophetic office is one of the offices in the New Testament uh, uh, that God has given to us in the New Testament. But he's looking for a, a, a prophet who, or who was once a disciple, who understands what it takes to learn, who understands what it takes to carry the body. And the Bible talked about Elisha. Who pour water? Who pour water on Elijah? That is the beginning of his discipleship. Pouring water means to bring refreshment, to begin to carry the load alongside with his master. Learning be all before Elijah. And the Bible let us to know the rest that Elijah become receive it. She received the double portion of the anointing. So let's look at it ingredient to discipleship. Number one, the Bible. The Bible is the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And our name is Mentorship Bible Academy. Bible is our main best God. Number two, the Holy Spirit. The Bible talk of Peter, of Paul, of Jesus, that they were full of the Holy Spirit. Number three, Christian fellowship. Christian fellowship. The Bible says we should not neglect the gathering of the, of the brethren. So you, you want to be in discipleship, you must yoke your neck. To the ministerial fellowship, fellowshiping among the brethren. Why? Because when we combine our feet together, there's what we call a divine deposit into your life. We have the Christian foundation to carry the cross. That is talking about your own grace as well, your gifting. How you are also developing yourself, not only developing, how you are manifesting the anointing that God has given to you. We have the mentor's quality. It means you are not only being trained to receive, you are also being trained to become leaders of leaders, helping someone. Look at the church. Is there anybody that you can help in the church? Is there anybody you can help in your family? Is there anybody you can help in the street? Is there anybody you can help at work to let their faith work? That is mentor's quality is imparted in you. Not only you are learning as a mentee, you are as well learning to become a, a mentor. So winning to become a soul winning to win soul for the Lord. And that was the that was the last commandment that Jesus Christ gave to us when he was going the book of Matthew chapter 28. When you read, when you read from the last two first, we will just go to Matthew 28. Because we are going straight to that. That will lead us to page 2. We need Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew chapter 28, verses number 18. To the end, yes, amen. Amen. 
it is the great commission of the Lord that we should do what? We should be a true sign that you are maturing, that you are growing, is that you have passion, that you don't want anybody in your life around you to go to hell. If wanting to bring people to say, Pastor, pray for them, then the most best work you could do that we give you crown in heaven to say, Pastor, ah, this is my neighbor. I want him or her to give his life to Jesus. And I want him or her to also become part of God's family. That is God's intention. The anointing of God upon the anointed is to make people first to make heaven before even making the heaven.